In this video, we're going to sum up all the places we went in Ireland. If you're interested in seeing any of the places in this video, please check out the links in the description. This was basically a zombie day. We arrived at about 5 a.m., then slept for a little while. After we woke up, we drank some tea and beer, and then proceeded to stumble in a drunken haze around Dublin like it was 3 a.m. Except we were not drunk. One of our stops to check out was the James Joyce Center. Obviously, it contained all things James Joyce, which we loved. Which is why we ended our day with an adaptation of Ulysses in anticipation of the next day to come. And then Magellan had some beer. Bloomsday was the impetus for this trip, a step-by-actual step walkthrough of Ulysses the widely celebrated and controversial novel by James Joyce. After 20 plus miles and 12 or so hours of walking, we were pretty exhausted. Even though it was super long, this walk was definitely worth it because we felt like we knew Dublin after walking it all day. It was awesome. And here Magellan is drinking some more beer. If you know us, you know we'll kayak in a puddle. So we had to kayak the Liffey, the river that runs through the center of Dublin. After that, it was Guinness time. And what better place to be than at the source? And then we kept walking around the city. We visited Dublin Castle. Dublinium Museum, and we also enjoyed some awesome live music and food at the Temple Bar. And Magellan had some more beer. The following day, we started with a stroll through Trinity College, excluding the Book of Kells, because we had no interest in sitting for hours online to crowd around each other and maybe see an illuminated page. St. Patrick's Cathedral was also on our list to stop by. And the reason we wanted to stop by there so much was because Jonathan Swift, the author of Gulliver's Travels, was the dean there from 1713 to 1745. Not to mention it is a gorgeous cathedral, so stop by either way. We highly recommend the Epic Immigration Museum because it gives you a nice representation of how the Irish diaspora have cleverly shaped and influenced our world. So to get a better sense of the Irish history, we stopped by Kilmainham Jail, which was a prison and execution site for many of the Irish revolutionaries during the Easter Rising. Dublin cattle is yummy. Yummy. You'd think because he's drinking whiskey today that he's not drinking beer, but that is not the case. He's drinking both. So would you be worried about driving on the opposite side of the road in a foreign country? We were. We were told we could get used to it in the rental car parking lot. Nope. Out into the world and immediately into traffic circles, or as they are referred to in Ireland, roundabouts. Our first destination was north to the ancient burial tombs known as Noth and Newgrange, which are older than the pyramids and Stonehenge. Think about that for a second. Afterwards, we proceeded to Maddie Betty Farm, which was our base of operations for several days while in Northern Ireland and conveniently situated to suit our needs. And some more beer. Hiking up to McArts Fort atop Napoleon's Nose was a really amazing hike with constant views overlooking the city of Belfast. It was also pretty windy. We started and ended at Belfast Castle for this hike. Afterwards, at the suggestion of a taxi driver back when we were in Dublin, we took the black taxi tour to spots around the city of Belfast to learn about the troubles, the nearly 30 year conflict that racked the city. And more beer. This day was a mix of, let's see some Game of Thrones locations while we go do these other things too, such as Ballantoy Harbor and the Iron Islands, or Downhill Beach and Dragonstone, 
or the Cushendune Caves, where Melisandre popped out a shadow baby that killed Renly Baratheon. We had a gorgeous day walking over the Karakarid rope ridge and then hiking down the Giant's Causeway. They were both so incredibly beautiful. And today, it's not beer, guys. It's whiskey. Actually, there's still more beer. So Belfast is really famous for the Titanic tour that they have there, but we ended up skipping that because of a tip we got from our Airbnb host about Rathlin Island, which is right off the coast there. And we took a ferry to this island and spent the whole day there, rented bikes, and it was awesome. It was just a really great experience. And this cow did take a pretty heavy liking to Greyhound. We then headed west out of Northern Ireland and into County Donegal, near Ardra, to our next place of stay in the Glendowen Valley. And guys, guess what? Magellan had some more beer. After taking in the heart attack fest that is the Irish breakfast, we ventured to the Glen Colin Kelly Folk Village. Afterwards, we hiked along a beautiful beach. Then up a winding path. And eventually we reached the cliffs to the north overlooking Scalpuna Bay. We saw one of the many Napoleonic signal towers here as well as Stirl, which had incredible views. And more beer. The next day we visited Asaranka Waterfall, which looks amazing frozen in the winter as well, which we've seen pictures of. Then we headed off to Mahara Strand. And let me tell you, we are from Long Island. We've seen a lot of beaches in our travels. And these beaches were amazing. They were pristine, they were flat, there was no one on them, and they had caves. And it was just amazing, beautiful. Afterwards, we hiked up the better Cliffs of Moor, also known as the Sleeve League. And don't give us any flack for that. They are better. They are also much higher. We then drove to Westport to get ready for our next destination for the following day. And now, it's time for more beer. We took a ferry to Inishturk, a remote and really not very visited island off the coast of County Mayo. Everyone goes to Clare Island, but you should just come here. Gorgeous, has great views of the mainland, and is completely peaceful and serene. We took a long walking loop around the coast. This is Big Boy and Little Boy on the western side of the island. And now, for the daily beer. So on day 12, we went to the Cliffs of Moher, which I feel like everyone does have to do because it's the one famous thing in Ireland you have to see. But they're definitely not as cool as a lot of the other cliffs that we saw. And there were tons of people, tons of buses. So if you're looking for something a little more rustic and secluded, these cliffs are probably not for you. But if you want to check this off your bucket list, definitely go for it. Afterwards, we went and saw the highest peak in Ireland. Cotton Tool, or O'Toole Sickle, which sits in the McGillicuddy's Reeks in County Kerry. We then headed to Port McGee, which apparently has the best toilet in Ireland. And more beer. So why were we in Port McGee? Because we're Star Wars nerds. Just kidding. The Skellig Islands were awesome to visit, but it was because we wanted to visit the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, not because Luke Skywalker drank green milk. Real quick mention, Noth and Newgrange and the Giant's Causeway are UNESCO sites too. Afterwards, we headed to our Airbnb, an estate in Bantir with 57 bedrooms and 16 bathrooms and probably two or three pianos. 
Long story on this one, but we originally thought we were renting a small cottage on the estate, but our host was so gracious to us. And Magellan had some more beer. The following day, we visited places some of our family lived in County Cork prior to emigrating to New York in Mallow, Kilburn, and Cantark. And because no visit to Ireland would be complete without kissing the Blarney Stone, we had to go kiss the Blarney Stone and see Blarney Castle. Then we drove down to the Ardmore coast and took an incredible sunset kayak tour of some sea caves. And then we ended our night in a Mongolian yurt of all places because this is one of those awesome places on Airbnb you can find if you just look hard enough. And here Magellan is drinking some more beer. Our last day was spent visiting some destroyed castles and other family places such as the Powers Court Estate. We also did some hiking through the Wicklow Mountains. Before long last, we found great relief and respite back in Dublin, where we stayed in a tiny backyard cottage, chic shed kind of thing, with a family who made us Dublin coddle. These people were amazing. And here Magellan is drinking beer again. Hey, real quick aside. If you put a sign on your mailbox in Dublin that says you don't want junk mail, they are prohibited from delivering it, unlike the U.S., where we're forced to take it. Magellan was so fascinated by this and so American and taking pictures of it that an Irish couple actually stopped us and asked us what we were doing very suspiciously, or I should say him, he was doing this. I was nowhere near him when he was doing this. This was horribly embarrassing. <laughs> In case you weren't sure if he was going to drink more beer, yes, today, he is drinking more beer. It's time to go. We were really sad, and it was the first time on any vacation that we had ever taken that we genuinely did not want to go home. This is Magellan. And this is Greyhound. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more epic road trips, kayaking, hiking, and other outdoor adventure videos, please subscribe to our channel. We'll see you on the trails or in the water.